You've heard people saying it over and over again. If you want to build muscle, you need protein. If you want to improve performance in the gym, you need protein. But did you know that you can actually get more than just protein from certain foods? Today, I'm going to talk about one food that has both protein and creatine, and another food that has all the essential amino acids plus more. Now, if you like this kind of evidence-based fitness info, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. All right, so let's start off with what is creatine. It's actually an amino acid derivative, meaning it comes from amino acids, but it's not used to make protein. In fact, the only amino acid that can be converted into creatine is the amino acid glycine. And when glycine is converted to creatine, it loses its ability to be turned into protein. So even if you were to take glycine and convert it all to creatine, you still would not be able to use that creatine to build more protein, at S. Because to build protein, you need all the essential amino acids and glycine is not one of them. Creatine, on the other hand, has many benefits. For example, it helps you regenerate ATP, which is energy in your muscles during exercise. You see, your body uses something called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, to allow you to do any kind of physical activity. The problem is that you only have a limited amount of ATP in your body at any given time. In fact, you only have enough ATP to last you a few seconds. However, by having some creatine in your system, you can increase how much phosphocreatine you have stored in your muscles. And phosphocreatine is used to rapidly regenerate more ATP. This allows you to work harder and recover faster during high-intensity activities like lifting weights. And it's this reason why many athletes take creatine as a supplement. Aside from improving performance, creatine can also help you retain water in your muscles. This is why many bodybuilders take creatine because they can look bigger and fuller simply by being waterlogged. Alright, so now let's talk about ease or essential amino acids. As the name suggests, essential amino acids are the amino acids that you must eat in your diet to survive. Now, there's nine essential amino acids and they are histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valanine. Of course, the best way to get these amino acids is by eating protein-containing foods like chicken, fish, beef, etc. And just like I mentioned before, your body uses amino acids to make protein, which is important for pretty much everything. So if you don't get enough amino acids in your diet, you will lose muscle. You woe and be able to fix damaged tissue, and you will basically be in a constant state of muscle breakdown and muscle. Protein synthesis, or the process of building muscle, will slow down or even stop. Now we also need to mention that EAAs can help you with recovery as well. Studies have shown that consuming EAAs post-workout can lead to greater muscle protein synthesis compared to casein protein. However, that doesn't mean that it's better than whey protein, because whey protein led to similar results when taken post-workout. But that's not what this video is about. The point of this video is to show you the differences between creatine and EAAs. And now that we've done that, let's move on to the next section. So when should you take creatine and when should you take EAAs? Well, when it comes to taking creatine, most people suggest taking 20 grams per day for the first week and then dropping the dose to 5 grams per day to maintain the benefits. What's interesting though is that you can also take 5 grams of creatine every day and reach the same maximum benefits in about 2 weeks. The point is that regardless of how you dose it, you will reach the same maximum benefits of creatine. On the other hand, if you're getting your EAAs from a supplement, most supplements recommend taking around 20 to 30 grams per day. However, it really depends on the brand and the ratio of each amino acid. Now, if you're getting your EAAs from food instead, you do not have to worry about a specific dosage, because as long as you're re-eating enough protein, you should be fine. Regardless, it's a good idea to look at the ingredients of any EAA supplement that you take to make sure that the supplement has all nine of the essential amino acids and that it does and contain any added sugar. So the next question you may have is which one is better for muscle growth and performance? Well, studies have directly compared creatine against EAAs, and the results showed that both creatine and EAAs were equally effective at increasing lean body mass, increasing fat-free mass, and increasing overall muscle mass. However, Creatine was more effective than EAAs at improving sprint performance, repeated sprint ability, and strength. On the flip side, EAAs were more effective than creatine at improving bone health and immune function. Overall, both supplements have their own unique benefits and drawbacks, 
which is why you can see many athletes take both. Let me tell you why. Creatine can improve sprinting performance, while EAAs can improve aerobic capacity. This means that by combining both, you can potentially improve both anaerobic performance and aerobic performance. Plus, EAAs can help you build protein, which is important for recovery. While creatine can improve the rate of ATP production, which is needed for explosive movements, this means that by combining both, you can improve muscle growth, strength, endurance, power, and recovery. So what does the science say about taking creatine and EAAs together? Well, it turns out that there aren't too many studies looking at this exact topic, but we do have some evidence to draw conclusions from. For example, one study found that when researchers combined creatine and beta-alanine, subjects experienced greater improvements in muscle growth and strength compared to those who took either supplement alone. Now, beta-alanine is an amino acid derivative that's often combined with creatine in pre-workouts. So this might suggest that taking creatine and EAAs together might be beneficial. Another study also found that combining creatine, beta-alanine, and citrulline led to greater improvements in strength and muscle growth compared to creatine alone. Citrulline is actually an amino acid that gets converted to arginine, which is then converted to nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a vasodilator, which means that it can cause blood vessels to widen, leading to increased blood flow. So by combining all three supplements, subjects were able to experience improved strength, muscle growth, and vasodilation. Lastly, another study found that taking branched-chain amino acids, or BCAAs, which are a subset of EAAs, together with creatine, led to greater improvements in muscle growth compared to creatine alone. In this study, the researchers took a very high dose of BCAAs, at 18 grams per day. And although the researchers didn't measure muscle protein synthesis, the researchers measured muscle thickness, which is a good indicator of muscle growth. So all this evidence suggests that taking creatine and ease together may be beneficial. So what's the bottom line? Should you take both creatine and EAAs? Well, from my perspective, it's not necessary to take both creatine and EAAs because you can get all the essential amino acids from eating protein. However, if you want to take both, then that's fine because there aren't any negative interactions between creatine and amino acids. Also, remember that the benefits of creatine are dose-dependent. This means that the higher the dose, the greater the benefit up to a certain point. For example, a 2017 meta-regression found that doses of creatine above 20 grams per day did not lead to greater benefits than doses of 20 grams per day. So even though most creatine monohydrate supplements recommend taking 5 grams per day. There isn't much harm in taking more creatine as long as you're re-getting it from a reputable brand. That said, if you decide to take more than 5 grams of creatine, I recommend that you get it from a buffered creatine or creatine hydrochloride supplement because creatine monohydrate gets less effective at higher doses. Now I know that this video was mostly about creatine, but that's because it's easier to understand the benefits of creatine. If you wanted me to make a video specifically about EAAs, then let me know in the comments below. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so you do not miss out on any future evidence-based fitness videos. Thanks for watching.